My name is Dr. Bart DeMarshall. I'm a professor of neurology at Mayo Clinic and director of Telestroke and Teleneurology. My objective this morning is to provide a brief description of our research study on the barriers to telemedicine. This collaborative research project was conducted by investigators in critical care, neurosurgery, and neurology, Rogove, MacArthur, Vespa, and myself from C3O Medical Group, UCLA, and Mayo Clinic, and sponsored by InTouch Health. Our objective was to survey users of robotic telemedicine in acute care environments like the intensive care unit and the emergency department to determine what factors motivate and what elements are perceived as barriers to the adoption and implementation of robotic telemedicine or remote presence in acute care environments. We sent approximately 500 electronic invitations to users of robotic telemedicine in Canada, the United States, and in Europe, representing approximately 60 healthcare institutions. And we invited them to go online and perform a, a 100 question web based survey investigating elements, both uh, theoretical, uh, conceptual, practical factors involved in the adoption of telemedicine and perceived barriers. The institutions were both academic and non-academic, and the, uh, re the potential uh, eligible respondents were uh, healthcare providers themselves that use telemedicine as well as administrators involved in telemedicine programs. So we received 106 respondents from the survey. <clears throat> they represented uh, large and small academic and also community non-teaching hospitals. Two-thirds of the respondents were uh, physicians that were engaged in robotic telemedicine. Approximately one-third of the respondents were administrators of telemedicine programs. The environments were all acute care, critical care. In fact, half of the respondents were engaged in telestroke and uh, well over a third were involved in other aspects of critical care and trauma. We received responses from over 60% of the institutions that we surveyed. And we learned the following things. The majority of the respondents described the primary motivational factors for robotic telemedicine as being the opportunity to deliver timely clinical expertise, uh, to overcome service gaps, to provide clinical support, to improve quality of care, patient satisfaction, and to improve adherence to guidelines of practice. And fortunately, the majority of respondents indicated that obtaining buy-in from healthcare personnel and administrators, the technology itself, and the culture did not serve as barriers to telemedicine implementation. However, the survey did reveal as we anticipated that the primary impediments to continued success in telemedicine are restrictions in licensing, the administrative burden regarding privileging, credentialing, malpractice insurance, limitations in ability for billing and reimbursement. So there were three action items that came from the research study. Number one, our investigative group applauded CMS for new policy for credentialing by proxy, which has tremendously reduced the administrative burden for the credentialing and privileging of telemedicine providers in remote spoke hospitals. Number two, we are continuing to urge the development and utilization of interstate and national telemedicine licenses for telemedicine providers. And thirdly, we would urge continued lifting of uh, reimbursement restrictions. In other words, encouraging both government and non-government insurers to more liberally reimburse for telemedicine consultations, the same as they would for face-to-face -face care, particularly for acute robotic telemedicine consultations where there is proven reliability, validity, safety, clinical efficacy, and cost-effectiveness. 
our research concerning the barriers to robotic telemedicine appeared in Telemedicine and eHealth, the official journal of the American Telemedicine Association in January 2012 issue. Robotic telemedicine provides patients with medical emergencies the timely clinical expertise when they need it most.